All right, everyone. Piers Morgan decided to whine on Twitter the other day, and it was pretty epic because uh, <laughs> what happened is he wrote a hit piece against Trump, a really dumb one, uh, in which he says basically Trump's going to have blood on his hands because of his disinfectant comments. Now, again, in context, if you look at what Trump actually said, as opposed to what the legacy media reports on as him saying, it's, a, it's really a tale of two entirely different things. He was suggesting novel therapies within a context of the experimental uh, nature of medicine, which is perfectly valid. It's not like the medicine we have now is the end-all, be-all of what is or is not effective, and to suggest anything else is evil pseudoscience. No, it's called hypothesis. It's called experimentation, testing, human trials, and so forth. Um, what he was suggesting was not that people should hook themselves up to an ammonia drip. That's clearly not the intent. If you think that a dude with a master's degree in billions of dollars, the president of the United States no less, actually believes in drinking bleach medicinally, there's something wrong with you. I think that's called Trump derangement syndrome, and I think you are definitely ill, but it's at least, it's a mental thing. So, you know, med medicine can't do much for it anyway, <laughs> because it uh, simply doesn't want to delve into politics. But Piers Morgan, he got unfollowed by Trump after his hit piece, because he's, he's doing the thing where he is deliberately antagonistic, which is, you know, to his credit, as far as getting attention anyway. And he got his shit kicked in in the comments because, of course, what he's saying is frenetic. And then he whines like a baby because, oh, the president unfollowed me. The, 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 the optics of the situation are so funny, though, because I guess the insinuation is Trump done goof. Trump is a bad man. But, oh, my God, he's, a, he's unfollowed. But he just can't take the heat. He should get out of the kitchen. Well, he is. He doesn't want to follow a person who's writing de defamatory hit piece about him taking his comments out of context, that again, Trump made a mistake by walking it back and saying he was being sarcastic. Uh, let's just put it that way. He was not being sarcastic. It's also a lie. <laughs> let's be entirely honest. Uh, but, but his verbiage was off. That's really the sum and substance of the problem there, is that he simply worded himself improperly. And so, yeah, what he was suggesting was not technically correct. But if you understand Trump speak, He's perfectly fine, and no reasonable person would suspect that Trump was actually encouraging them to put a light bulb down their esophagus or something like that. That's obviously not what he meant. Only if you have severe TDS could you possibly get that from what he said. Really, really funny. But watching Piers Morgan whine and, like, go frenetic on Twitter is, is always a funny thing, and this isn't you know, this is by far the first time this has happened. He does this on a regular basis. Um, not just about Trump, and it predates, like, the Trump administration entirely. Piers Morgan, for uh, a number of years before that, was already doing this sort of thing, and he was sort of a legacy media guy, and now does more of the kind of self-branded thing, generally speaking, um, and, and is good at antagonizing people. But we, one, one thing we have to understand with these folks... We, we have to start archiving everything. Like, like people were sharing out the tweet to me, and it's like, again, you should archive it, therefore he's getting less attention, because that's not giving him clicks on the actual tweet. Unless somebody intends to go to the actual tweet and, you know, shit things up, basically. Um, no, no, uh, Piers Morgan articles. The article itself is basically clickbait. The entire legacy media clickbaited the whole public. Because they insinuated that what Trump was saying was improper and dangerous, and then they, by logical stretching, they said, well, somebody out there is going to drink Lysol. Trump will be responsible for that. It's funny because supposedly Trump is a total, according to these people, supposedly he's a total moron who thinks that bleach is medicinal. But at the same time, they expect that their own readership, which is where they would get the out-of-context clips that would lead anyone to believe that's what Trump was suggesting, they're suggesting that part of their own user base, their own reader base, is dumb enough to actually follow the suggestions. Again, the out-of-context suggestions, so-called. But if you look at the entire clip, Trump is clearly talking about experimental therapeutics. He's not, ta he's not even talking about pseudoscience. Some <laughs> of these things are being tested in a clinical setting. By mainstream medical apparatuses, not just in the United States. Hydroxy, this is basically hydroxychloroquine 2.0 anyway. When he initially suggested that, what did the legacy media do? Well, there's no evidence that it works. It can cause death. Somebody ate fish tank cleaner. Trump is responsible. It's the same fucking shit. But see, Piers Morgan is one of those, like, Geraldo types that gets, like, really, really amped up about things and really, really hyperbolic. Like, wow, th this changes everything. 
You know, th this mass shooting is why we need to scrap the Second Amendment. You know, it, before it would be Piers Morgan would be saying like, you know, like, well, well guns are, be are good. I was in Europe and people can't defend themselves and the founders would be, uh, think it was atrocious. And then, you know, a shooting comes along that gets big in the legacy media and Piers Morgan hours later crafts a story about why we need to ban these big scary rifles that I don't know anything about because I never used one. Or on like, or on like a free expression or something. Well, the right to protest is so sacred, and the government's being tyrannical. Oh, but this time it's okay to lock things down. Yeah, fuck the right to a free assembly. Or, or on privacy, like, well, we got too much privacy because end-to-end uh, -end encryption will allow criminals to uh, do criminal things. Oh, but at the same time, the government best not be touching that Fourth Amendment. He takes both sides on all fucking issues, especially in the sense of liberty versus tyranny. But on the issue of Trump, he's done the same thing. Look, Piers Morgan figures Trump's having a rough time because he doesn't understand poll analysis, and he's figuring he can get more fans by bad-mouthing Trump at the, that particular juncture. And then probably a month from now, he'll have another article about how he, oh, Trump actually is doing a good job, and this suggestion is great, and, and he's a swell, upstanding guy. And he sort of bounces back and forth between these two polar extremes in order to try to, dr to draw more people into his audience. In reality, what he does is antagonize and alienate basically everyone under the sun, except for his core fan base, which I don't know why it exists at all, because he's not a very interesting guy to listen to. Yeah, trying to see him go off script to, and, and rant for half an hour each morning, that would be very, very interesting indeed, because at some, at some point, again, he would alienate everyone, and it would be a very, very funny time. Uh, and it would just be Piers Morgan being Piers Morgan. But the Trump derangement syndrome associated with this particular story is, again, it's hydroxychloroquine 2.0. And, and then that's not the first time that we saw that kind of thing either. This has happened over and over and over again within Trump's presidency. He says something that is fundamentally true but worded improperly and everyone acts like it's Armageddon. And at the same time, they say, well, uh, our audience is dumb enough to follow the supposed suggestions of this idiot president, according to the legacy media. <laughs> so CNN is saying its audience is stupid. Well, I mean, I kind of agree, but I don't think that they're stupid enough to drink Clorox. I doubt that that's actually going to happen. You know, maybe. But then again, you can't blame Trump for that. He never suggested it. And Piers Morgan ought to be ashamed of himself for jumping on the bus of... Uh, of idiots, basically, of parroting the same few talking points, none of which were actually correct. I suspect this won't be the last time during this election that this happens also. It's funny to see Biden jump on, I can't believe I have to say this, but please don't drink and drink drain cleaner, or whatever he said. That was never suggested, Joe. At, at any given time, look, you have a Tara Reid problem aside that you'd rather not talk about. There's a reason why you choose to fixate on whatever's in vogue in the news at the time. Because the legacy media has taken marching orders at this point from the DNC. They refuse to touch that story entirely. There's a fucking half of the Wikipedia article on Tara Reid's allegations, by the way, at this point, is, is criticism of legacy media coverage or lack thereof. Half the fucking article. It's beefier than the scandal itself. The real scandal is the legacy media actively covering for the ass of Joe Biden because it's so pissed off at Trump. Piers is part of that same group. He probably won't talk that much about Tara Reid now, will he? The lopsided coverage involved, again, he's a legacy media hack. He's only semi-independent in his coverage. It doesn't matter if you're independent if you're just a bitter partisan now, does it? That's about all. Peace out.